Hello students, welcome once again to our biology lesson. I hope you remember to keep on sanitizing and uh, observing social distancing. Remember that we have to remain safe to be able to survive. Now today, in year 9, biology, we are going to look at the adaptation of the leaf to photosynthesis. Previously, remember, we looked at the entire process of photosynthesis. We looked at where it occurs. And remember, that is a process that takes place inside the chloroplast, the organ, uh, organelle known as the chloroplast. And uh, that's where it occurs. Uh, we looked at the two stages, that's the light stage and the dark stage. And therefore, it's now a good time to look at the external part of the leaf, because that time we're looking at the internal structure of the leaf. So we want to look at the adaptation of the leaf to photosynthesis. Uh, at the end of the lesson, we should be in a position to explain the adaptations of a leaf to photosynthesis. We have to be in a position to explain how a leaf is adapted to the process of photosynthesis. And remember that in the explanation based on the adaptations of the leaf, each particular adaptation must be attached to its uh, function. That is, you mention the adaptation and the function at the same point. That is when such a point is complete. So I'll be making some references in some of the adaptations that we're going to be discussing. Now, uh, to start with, it is important to look at the key sections when it comes to the internal structure of a leaf, which are directly involved in photosynthesis. We have the cuticle, we have the upper epidermis, we have the palisade mesophyll, we have the spongy mesophyll, we have the lower epidermis, then we have the stomata, or what you call the stoma. The main sections that you have to be very careful with is the upper and the lower epidermis, and then the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll, as well as the, the stoma or the stomata. Those are the key parts that uh, we shall be discussing, amongst others, that are directly involved in uh, the process of photosynthesis. Now, to start with, a leaf has a broad, flat lamina. It has a broad, flat lamina, which provides a large surface area for the absorption of sunlight energy and carbon for oxide. It has a broad, flat lamina, which provides a large surface area for the absorption of sunlight and carbon for oxide. Now, remember that we have different types of leaves. We have the broad surfaced leaf. We also have the narrow leaf. So we are saying that the plants that have narrow leaves still will carry out photosynthesis. But the efficiency in the production of the leaf will be very limited because the amount of sunlight that will be penetrating into the leaf will be very little because of the surface area of the leaf. That's why the broadness of the leaf determines um, the absorption of the sunlight energy and carbon dioxide and therefore directly impacting on the process of photosynthesis. Now, if you were to look at the plants with the narrow leaves, you discover that most of them are very thin and also very tall. That means that they don't have a very big stem or a, a, they're not very huge trees. As compared to the plants which have got broad leaves, most of them have got uh, very large stems as a result of the adequate amount of food that is manufactured. The leaf is also very thin, very thin to allow easier passage of light energy and carbon dioxide to the photosynthetic cells. 
Now, remember that this light energy, as discussed in the process of photosynthesis earlier, is very key when it comes to photolysis of water, the splitting down of water molecules to release the hydrogen atoms which are used in the dark reaction in photosynthesis. So, the sunlight energy has to access the photosynthetic cells. Someone will ask, what are these photosynthetic cells? When I talk about photosynthetic cells, I am referring to the palisade cells. Palisade cells. And therefore, it should have a thin surface so that this light energy can penetrate quite easily to reach the palisade cells. That is actually what that point is all about. Now, it also has what you call a transparent cuticle and epidermis. Transparent cuticle and epidermis, which allows easier penetration of light to the palisade cells. This particular point, together with the one previously looked at, are all towards the same, same function. That means allowing penetration of light energy to the palisade cells. Now, if I may just briefly talk about the cuticle, it's the upper part of the leaf, both on the upper section and the lower section, the outer section of the leaf. Now, if this were not transparent, when you talk about transparent, it means that uh, it's a material that can allow light to pass through. So, the cuticle is able to allow light energy to pass through as well as the epidermis and therefore light has no hindrance it is not blocked by the structure of the cuticle and the epidermis so it is able to penetrate and reach the palisade cells so it is true to say that the leaf has a transparent cuticle and epidermis which allows easier penetration of light to the palisade cells Similarly, another point towards the same, the leaf has numerous stomata which ensures efficient diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf cells. We are looking at what we call stomata. I normally see very many people make mistake in the word stomata. The term stomata is a biological term which is in plural, implying that the openings, these are the openings on the leaf which allow the gases to diffuse into the leaf and also out of the leaf. The small openings which are found on the surface of the leaf. Now, if you are to look at only one of them, if it is only one opening, then in biology, we refer to it as stoma. Stoma. So if stoma is just one, if there are many, it's stomata. We don't talk of stomatas. We don't add S. With biological terms, you have to be very careful. So there are very many stomata which ensures efficient diffusion of carbon dioxide into the leaf cells. The distribution of this particular stomata also varies. In most of the leaves, you find that most of the stomata are found on the lower surface, ensuring that the carbon dioxide can be able to enter the leaf without being affected by the sunlight energy or the excess light energy in the atmosphere. So the distribution of the stomata normally varies from a particular ecosystem to a different ecosystem. The aquatic plants, for example, have most of the stomata on the upper surface of the leaf because they are inside a water body. Therefore, the efficiency of the process of gas exchange in the aquatic plants is uh, very, done, uh, very well done when the stomata are placed on the upper surface of the leaf. In our next session, we shall be able to look at more of the adaptations of the leaf 
to the process of photosynthesis. See you there.